Good morning. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 28. Observe and obey all these words which I command you, that it may go well with you and your children after you forever, when you do what is good and right in the sight of the Lord your God. So, I want to talk to you today about the goodness of God. That God loves you and He wants to do you good. And there's a few kind of headings under which you can now pursue that discussion. The first one is the ability of God to do you good. Uh, God is, at the end of the day, in the final analysis, He is the only one who can do you good. And any good that comes to you through other people in life, as we experience good from many people in our lives, but at the end of the day, all of that comes through the providential dealings of God. He has decreed that those people should come into your life, do the things they do, that you should have the experiences that you've had, that you should be born into the family that you were. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. And He doesn't change. He's good. And He loves you. And He, he wants to do you good. Um, so God is able. God is able to do you good. And then the next heading would be that uh, God has been very clear about what causes Him to do us good. Uh, God doesn't hide behind some veil of mystery. God is clear. He tells us what he expects from us. And he says, if you will observe and obey my commands, I will do you good. Do what's right and I will be with you. And of course, the summary of, of what is right in the sight of God is, is the Ten Commandments. And so, you know, what do we have to do in order for God to do us good? Well, we must do what's right. What is right? Well, firstly, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. But you worship God the Father, God the Son, His Son Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, the God of the Bible. That's who we worship, and we worship no other God. Second of all, you shall not make any idol to worship it. And an idol is really anything that you place your hope and faith in to make you ultimately happy or to give you meaning or purpose in life that is divorced from the will of God. So God gives us many things that do give us joy and meaning and purpose in life. But do you hold all of those things loosely or do you put your faith ultimately in them and choose them over saying to God, you know, Lord, I'm, I see this opportunity and it it seems good to me and I'm going to pursue it, but not my will be done. Let your will be done. Lord, above all these things, I don't place my hope in them, even in the money that I have. Lord, I place my hope in you. That's what it means not to be an idolater. Thirdly, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for God will not hold that person guiltless who takes his name in vain. And of course, that means not using his name or the name of Jesus Christ as a swear word, but it also means not calling yourself a Christian, taking on the name of Jesus when you are living in sin. Uh, fourthly, you shall honor the Sabbath day, keep it holy, and I believe that's fulfilled in Jesus Christ. We, don't, we no longer have to honor the Sabbath in the way the Old Testament Jews did, for Jesus Christ himself is our rest. We rest from all our works in him. And so have faith in Christ. Then fifth, you shall honor your mother and your father. And, you know, are you doing that? Am I doing that? Are, are we honoring our parents? Uh, sixth, you shall not kill. And in the New Testament, Jesus interprets that as, as, as being, even not being angry with someone. Because murder starts in the heart. That's where all murders begin. And so if you're just angry or you curse people or you, you write people off in anger, uh, Jesus said you're, you're, you're in danger of being a murderer and of being found guilty as a murderer. And so 
find, continually finding love in our hearts, continually finding peace with our fellow man and seeking peace and of doing nothing that will endanger the life of another human being. Uh, seventh, you, you shall not commit adultery. And of course, Jesus reinterprets that in the New Testament, not as just a husband or a wife having an affair with someone else, but um, fornication, having sex outside of, of, of marriage, or in, in this case, before marriage. So you're not married yet, and yet you're sleeping with each other. That is a, a breaking of the, of the seventh commandment. You shall not commit adultery. And Jesus went even further. He said, if you so much as look at another person to lust after them in your heart, you've already committed adultery with them in your heart. And so sexual purity, that's what God demands of us. Uh, and then the eighth commandment, you shall not steal. So taking anything that does not belong to you. Uh, and then ninth, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Don't, don't gossip. Don't tell lies about people. Don't cast people in a light that will cause others to, to harm them or think badly of them. And then the final commandment, don't covet your neighbor's possessions. Don't be jealous. Be satisfied with what you have. So what is it that God demands of us in order to bless us? Well, he's made it clear. And of course, the story is more complex than that, because as you begin to read the Bible and you study your own heart, you realize man, I'm not capable of doing these things. You know, I break these things all the time. And so. What is our recourse? How is it that we are still to find the blessing of God and the goodness of God in our lives? Because he's told us what to do, but we can't do it. Well, he's given us a remedy. And that is the gospel. Repentance and faith in his son, Jesus. Continually coming back to God in, in repentance and saying, Father, I've sinned. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and putting your faith in, in Jesus continually. And that's what initially baptism is about. And then communion. As a Christian, we, we go to church and from time to time we celebrate communion. And that's what it's about. It's about continually repenting and, and coming to God and asking him for cleansing. And so there's this, there's this recourse. There's this remedy for us. Though we can't obey these perfectly when we do, when we disobey we can find forgiveness and reconciliation with God because we have peace with him through our Lord Jesus Christ so all of this is to bring us back to this point how are we to find the blessing and goodness of God well we've got to obey him and when we don't perfectly obey there's the remedy of the gospel so at the end of the day what I want to leave with you is that you know God is the only one who can genuinely give you blessing in life. He, he's the only one that can truly invest you with a sense of dignity. And he wants you to have dignity. God doesn't want you to live with a sense of shame. He loves you. Uh, God is good. He wants to bless you. His kingdom is the place where you will find the fulfillment and joy that you seek. And he wants to do it. Uh, he calls you to himself. And he shows you the path that you must take. Obedience and then repentance and faith in his son for the remedy where we've not been obedient. And if you follow that path in life, though it may take time because God does test our faith. He matures us through hardship. But he does that so that he may do us good in the end. This I guarantee you. If you live your life obeying God, seeking forgiveness through Jesus, God will bless you because he wants to. He's good. And so let's close with that verse again. Deuteronomy 12, 28. Observe and obey all these words which I command you, that it may go well with you and your children after you forever. When you do what is good, and right in the sight of the Lord your God. I'll see you tomorrow.